All right, so hey everyone, I'm continuing with this series of short videos where I share my thoughts on a topic related to Manifold Garden's development. Yesterday I talked about dealing with feedback and comparisons of the game, you know, how, how can I make effective use of that. And today I want to talk a bit about the button prompt system. I just finished refactoring it yesterday, so it's still fresh in my mind. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. So, you know, the, the, the button prompt system is, you know, kind of what it shows which buttons to press uh, to teach players like, okay, you know, A is to interact with a button, right trigger is to change gravity. Um, so on the surface, it seems quite simple, you know, when you get to a certain spot or when you're like close enough to the wall, we, we show an image. So in this case, we're showing space. Um, and then after you've press that it stops showing up. So it's kind of just there to teach the player. And, and once the player's done it, then we don't show it anymore. Um, but there's a few tricky things that make it a little bit more complicated. So the first is that you can actually remap buttons in Manifold Garden. So, you know, you can go to control panel um, and like I'm gonna remap interact to um, P instead of E. If I go back here, it's actually going to show the button P4 press this button instead of E. So if I hit E, it doesn't work. Okay. So the way we handle that is we actually use this uh, input manager called uh, rewire, and then that takes all the elements in and maps them to a certain action and so that handles the button remapping and then we just have to decide where you know which which button to show um as a result uh, and it's straightforward the other thing we do also is we have to um, handle input from various other controllers so let's just kind of load up another game uh, the prompts they swap depending on whether you're using, um, you know, mouse keyboard or a DualShock 4 controller or an Xbox controller. So you're just gonna start from the game from the beginning. Um, so you can see here, now I'm holding an Xbox 360 controller and it's showing me, you know, RT right trigger um, to an with this A. And if we go to settings and remap this, uh, let's make it, um, I think Y is not being used. Replace. Um, let's go back. Now hit resume. If I go here, yeah, you can see um, it's telling me to press Y. Yes. So of course, all those, all the graphics are a work in progress. So let me talk a bit about how that is all done. So yeah, like I said, we use uh, this is the prompt controller. Um, so these are the button images and these are the keyboard images. What we do is we have this button to image system. And so we manually assign, you know, all the graphics for PS4 buttons like left stick, right stick. Um, we, same thing for Xbox and then for mouse left, mouse right, mouse middle, mouse wheel, etc. So for controller, it's actually quite simple because there's only like you know, 22 or 23 images. And, you know, uh, these are like all the buttons that you can press and basically they get fed into uh, rewired, which, you know, handles, you know, what, what action they go to. So these are, let's say here, these are the, the different actions that you can perform. This is like interact, um, you know, this here is um, change gravity. And we have, let's say, I don't know, um, uh, like pick up box uh, and drop box. Interact, pick up box, and drop box are actually all the same in Manifold Garden, but just for the sake of this demonstration, we'll make them different buttons. So, you know. So they go through rewired and then rewired is like, okay, well, you know, this button is gonna be change gravity, this will be interact, uh, this will be pick a box, and this will be drop box. So it handles kind of changing them around. But 
And what we do is we read from rewired like which element, which button it's supposed to be, which comes in in the form of an element identifier ID. So each button gets one number, it's like zero to 22. And we look at that number and then we decide, okay, so right now interact, the element identifier is like two, which is, I don't know, the button A. So we show that image. So we just, you know, we have 22 images and we just change them depending on uh, how you've got it mapped. It gets a little bit trickier with keyboard just because there are a lot more keys. And instead of having a different graphic for each key, what we actually do is we just get the key code. We just we just get the character from the um, the the key code and then display that on top of an image of a blank button. So what we do here in prompt controller when we get the keyboard out right here it is. Okay, so update keyboard mouse prompt sprites. So this is, okay, so here, this, this is for mouse, and down here, this is for keyboard. So you can see what we're doing here is, this is the controller ID that comes in, um, so that we, in Man for Garden, we only have one, because there's only one player. And then if it's mouse, these are the buttons that we show, so we get the keyboard mouse sprite. Um, and then for, keyboard what we actually do is we convert the key code to string and so here this is this is this show so we've got a text on top of an image so the text is the key code to string um, and what it does is it first looks it looks up the key code in a dictionary so uh, these are you know, for, for certain symbols, we don't actually want to print the key code name. Like if you just did key code to string, I think it'll show exclaim, you know, E-X-C-L-A-I-M instead of the actual character. So we just have this dictionary that maps it to the character. So first what we do is we check to see if the key code that's coming in is in the dictionary. If it is, then we, you know, get the appropriate string. Uh, otherwise, we just we can just print it out to string. So I think for all the, the letters, uh, you know, E will just show up as E. Um, so once we've gotten the, so we get the, the string from here, that's the text that's shown on the button. And then what we do is you got this image and we change the size of the image based on the length of the string. Um, I think this might cause problems if we're using, if we localize the, um, the text on the keyboard. I, I don't know if the enter button is different in Russian. I don't know if it's, if they put enter or it's the Russian word in Cyrillic, in which case we might, um, we might run into some problems there or we just have to make further adjustments. But basically, yeah, we rescale the button and we put the text in. So that is the, more or less the button prompt system. You know, we also do save it. So obviously if you don't, we don't show the, we only show the prompts once in each game. So if you load the game again and you've already pressed the button for change gravity, it's not gonna show that anymore. Um, there are some other issues where you start up a game um, and you like the button prompt comes up. If you load another game, we used to have the, the prompt would stay there, but now we've changed it so that it resets it between each playthrough. So. All right, I think that's it for the button prompt system. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, just put them in the comments below. Um, otherwise, you can wishlist the game on Steam, Manifold Garden, and the website is just manifold.garden. And of course, I, I stream development of the game all the time. And that's just at twitch.tv slash William Cheer. Um, so feel free to stop by and, and ask me questions there if you need any more clarification. I probably won't be working on the prompt system for a little while. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you guys later.